We know there are a lot of questions about Maximo 8, which is why we're so pleased to present today's session about the new Maximo 8 user interface. Uh, leading today's discussion, as many of you know who joined us before, is Amy Tatum, uh, Vice President and Technical Director for Starboard Consulting. Amy has 25 years and counting. <laughs> she is an all things Maximo expert and a technology consultant who has managed implementation of countless Maximo projects. Amy, thank you so much for joining us today, our last coffee chat of the year. I know. Thank you, Alex. It's hard to believe that we are at the last one of the year. It's it's November already. We've got the holidays right around the corner. So um, the year of 2020 that we also, or 2021, we also anxiously awaited is, uh, is quickly coming to an end. But um, thanks everybody for joining us today. We're, we're glad that you're here and hope to be able to impart some useful information to you um, as we talk about the Maximo 8 user interface. Um, real quick before we get started, just a little bit of background with Starboard Consulting. Um, we're a Maximo business, uh, I'd be a business partner, Maximo implementer. We do all things Maximo. So upgrades, installations, um, assessments, training, data loads, integrations, a lot of spatial work, you name it. If it includes anything to do with Maximo, then we can, can help you out with that. So um, feel free to reach out to us after the webinar if you've got some unanswered questions that we don't get to. Um, we'd be happy to, to work with you on that. We're very excited to be part of the, the wider Maximo community and participate a lot in the various user groups and um, other forums and try to offer uh, quality content online and in situations like this. So thanks again for, for joining us. We're again happy that you're here. And today our special guest is uh, Jordan. And uh, Jordan Smith is here with us from IBM. He's a product manager. Jordan, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Hi, yeah. So yeah, Jordan Smith. I'm a product manager at IBM. Uh, I focus mainly on Maximo's UX modernization efforts uh, and the front end frameworks. I've been with Maximo only about six years, which is nothing in Maximo <laughs> terms, uh, working primarily on the work centers and our newer deliverables that we're calling the role based applications. Uh, but I'm also closely involved in the modernization efforts of the core applications in manage uh, that have been around for many years that you're all very familiar with. Uh, and that's the focus of the webinar today. Great. Thank you for joining us. Have you seen the UI from back in versions three and four? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, the Tivoli 09 <laughs> skin was, uh, and Tivoli 13 skins are kind of where I came in. I designed okay. the IoT 18 skin, uh, and today we'll show you the new one. Nice. Very good. Well, thanks for joining us. Um, we're happy to have you here. Before we get started, Alex, I think you've got a quick poll for us. Thanks, Amy. Thanks, Jordan. So in your chat window, you should see a poll. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, who's had a chance to work or check out the new Maximo or Manage 8 interface? So we'll give everyone a couple seconds to, to look in their chat window. It's pretty different. If you have any That's comments different. about that, um, you're welcome to, to type that into the comment box as, as well. I know yes and no doesn't always cover it. <laughs> so a few yeses, which is great, almost 20%. So that's great to see. A lot of no's, so today is gonna be really helpful. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and end the poll. If you didn't get a chance to participate or wanna add comments, please, we'd, we'd love to hear from you in the comments. Thanks, Amy, back to you. Thank you. All right, so the new interface. Um, this whole UI design thing is a, a line of work that I wasn't even all that familiar with until recently. So the fact that this is what you do is kind of fascinating to me. Um, I'm sure it's been a challenging project. Uh, and I know a lot of times people kind of get used to what they're used to and uh, don't always like the change, but there's some really interesting and, and great changes in the new UI. So Jordan, tell me a little bit about how you ended up here, kind of what, what do we have to look forward to as we move forward to, to Maximo 8 and Manage? Yeah, so we've been <clears throat> investing heavily in uh, improving user experience and the visual design in Maximo for a while, uh, and within all of IBM's AI apps in general. And the goal is to have a really similar 
user experience across all of the Maximo applications going forward. So this includes like visual semblance around icons, colors, layouts, stuff like that, but also the functional behaviors uh, for the more common tasks like navigation, uh, application, entering of data, these types of pieces, right? Um, uh, this is going to provide several key benefits for our users. It's uh, First of all, it's going to provide a, an easier learning curve, right? As you encounter the same things over and over, you're going to kind of start to recognize the pattern um, of what, you know, what you're trying to do in any application. Uh, it should make the products look a little bit more modern. Uh, I won't say pretty, but <laughs> they should behave a bit more similarly to things that you've seen out in your everyday life, uh, consumer applications um, elsewhere. And that'll also make it a little bit easier to learn. Finally, it's really gonna make it easier to use in general, right? We want our users to be confident uh, on the, the interaction points and the behaviors that they, they're used to. And then we wanna make it intuitive and approachable. So in general, it's just really important for us uh, that the user enjoys using the applications and, and that it doesn't get in the way of them entering clean data uh, and doing what they do to get the job done. Okay. That's great. As, as an implementer, I love the ease of use and the ease of training. I know as we we go into our training for implementations, we kind of approach those on a, a two-pronged approach. There's the kind of the technical training of what button do I push and how do I interact with the app? Mm -hmm. And then there's the more uh, process-oriented education as far as you know the quality of the data and, and how you're actually getting value out of the system. So being able to make that ease of use and that technical training a little more streamlined um, will be very helpful and allow us to focus more on the education of, of kind of why Maximo. Um, I know one of the other things with this is, is you know, we think Maximo and, and most of us that have been around a long time immediately think of the Maximo EAM, but now with the broader Maximo suite and manage being the traditional EAM, you are also looking to do this across the entire suite, right? So if I move from manage to assist to health, I'm going to see that same um, kind of consistency of, of application, right? Absolutely. Yeah. We have built what we call a pattern asset library or PAL uh, for all of Maximo and other applications uh, in IBM as well. Uh, but to follow the same patterns over and over, again, is really what we're trying to do here so that the users uh, can recognize what they're seeing and quickly pick it up. Uh, and the newer applications such as health and monitor, uh, they use this pattern asset library. And now we, what we need to do is to bring that into the EAM solution as far as we can, right? There are certainly limitations and we don't wanna change EAM, you know, the core applications too much, uh, but in places where we can make improvements, uh, that's kind of where we're starting with uh, and I'll be showing that today. Okay, cool. Um, so this is, I guess, kind of some of what you've you've been through um, as yep. far as phase one. So a couple of different steps there. Anything in particular you want to <clears throat> point out? Yeah, so there's a few different flavors. There's three flavors to our first approach. Uh, the first flavor is upgrading the UI component completely to something more modern. Um, in this case is a React component. Uh, which is just a fancy name for a front-end UI component that actually came as a third party from Facebook that a lot of people use out in the web. Um, okay. And so what we're doing is we're upgrading the masthead to use this new component in, uh, in Manage and EAM. And, and that's the same kind of masthead that you will see in all the other Moz applications. So from the second you log in, uh, no matter where you go, you're going to be using that same masthead. Um, the second, uh, that's our ideal approach for modernizing. We'll be okay. doing more of this in the future. Our second flavor is just updating the existing controls that uh, have been there for a while to have a better design and UX pattern uh, and kind of match that PAL that I was talking about. And, right. and you know, for this release, um, we're doing that mostly with our navigation features. Uh, navigation is really the key piece, I think, to get semblance across the entire suite and that's mm -hmm. where we're focusing our efforts at the beginning. Uh, it's just a key element that we need to be consistent. Um, so when you navigate, um, users are not going to get confused. They're going to know how to get to different apps. They're going to know how to get to different areas inside of apps. It's going to be very familiar to them if we can 
if we can really get that uh, semblance. And then the final flavor is what you would think of as a standard reskin, right? Updating the style sheet to match the pattern asset library from a visual perspective. So anything that really isn't part of the first two flavors is going to fall under that third bucket. Um, you know, this should make transitions between the uh, newer and older apps in the suite a lot less jarring. Uh, it's critical that we kind of create one cohesive suite visually. Uh, so that's our third flavor. So with all of that combined, we really should reach a fairly strong semblance uh, throughout uh, the suite of applications and transitioning should be fairly seamless. Very good. Now, I expect that with that transition, you know, there's um, one of the questions that we've gotten in the past is as we do upgrades and the skins change about being able to keep keep your old skins and stay with the old look. I'm assuming that, you know, with this change, we're going to lose that opportunity, right? So, yeah. So going forward, we're going to have one UI presentation uh, for mm -hmm. the EAM EM solution. Uh, the system property that controls the skins is no longer going to be exposed. And we won't even be delivering the skins as part of the package. There's a couple of reasons for this. One reason is the scope of changes that we're making uh, spanned far beyond just the skin setting. Right. Sure. Uh, we're changing behavioral elements of the controls themselves. So users are going to be impacted uh, by those changes, even if they you know, try to go back to an old skin. Um, another reason to note is that we're really attempting to implement targeted updates across five different skins. That's you know, would be a lot of effort lot to, to do. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. And it would be it would just lead to quality loss, uh, mm -hmm. especially in areas where we've made those behavioral changes that I'm talking about. Uh, we don't want to. We don't want to have quality loss. We want one well-functioning UI, rather than kind of five buggy skins, right? Um, and then another reason <clears throat> is all the other offerings in Moz, right? Um, like Health Predict, uh, the core admin applications. They're always going to use uh, this this style. Um, right. I'm not saying that they'll never change styles, right? Uh, but when they do, when some um, you know, new visual design comes out for the suite, uh, it'll change in unison. Uh, so we'll always kind of match all the other apps in the suite. And you know, that's kind of the purpose of the goals that I stated at the beginning of the call, right, is that we want one single and well-vetted approach uh, for our UI and UX. That, that all makes sense. And those are, are good reasons. And I think you know, looking at the, the greater good and the more holistic approach and getting the consistency across the apps is, is important and well worth the effort. It, I think it's also important, though, to point out that we're not losing the ability to configure the screens, though. So things like moving fields around and adding fields and changing labels, all of that is still um, fully available. It's more just that underlying Kind of architecture and look and feel and and what we would have traditionally thought of being the skins that that we're not going to have as much or any control over so much anymore because we're keeping that level of consistency going forward yep that's correct we're not removing any um you know of the features that come with app designer right uh, really anything uh, other than a couple system properties the main one being that uh, that skin property and a few others regarding font sizing things that were introduced in IoT 18 uh, okay. that don't really match with uh, the rest of uh, the PAL. All right. Well, I've been lucky enough to be able to play around with uh, with Manage and, and the eight skins a little bit, but I know from our poll, a lot of the folks on our audience have not. So I think you're prepared to, to give us a demo, right? Can we jump in and look around a little bit? Sure thing, yeah. <clears throat> Let me turn my screen sharing on. Okay, can you see my screen? Mm -hmm. Great. We so, sure do. yeah, so this is the Start Center in, in the new skin. Um, not a whole lot has changed on the Start Center. We've updated a couple of the colors uh, of the sharding package, uh, but mainly it's become very gray and white, uh, which is the feel that you have in the rest of Moz. Uh, we call it our gray 10 uh, theme. And uh, this is kind of what you'll see um, and not a whole lot of changes, definitely no functional changes here in the start center itself. Uh, the main changes you'll see <clears throat> are coming around navigation, kind of like I said before. So looking at this uh, top of the masthead, this is now the kind of shared masthead across all of Moz. Uh, and on the far right side, you'll see this is the app switcher. 
I, if I open this up, I'm not in a true Moz environment, but if I was, I would be able to see applications such as health, predict, uh, monitor, all the other um, newer applications in the suite would be available here for me to quick launch to. And I can also go back to the main page uh, where I can set my profile information and other pieces that are part of Moz. Uh, so this is how I get around um, the suite using this menu. And then the rest of these items you guys probably know already. This is going to be your profile menu. Uh, you'll see some uh, of the options that were in the profile before, such as your default information, which you can click on mm -hmm. to open up uh, this default information dialog. This is kind of how dialogues are going to look now. Uh, nothing has really changed or moved here. You do have a, a new section here for your profile. This is your Moz profile. Uh, if clicking manage profile will bring me out to the, um, the main Moz screen where I can update my profile for that. Um, the help uh, is still available here for the whatever app you're in inside of EAM. Uh, but you also have a couple more help options here that are uh, coming from the suite. This um, placeholder here uh, is used for an administrator. So if I'm a Moz administrator, I would be able to quick launch here into uh, the Moz settings page where I can do a lot of admin functions. Uh, this is the reports dialog. So uh, here I can generate reports on any of the applications I have access to and then the bulletin board as well. Uh, now going further left here, you'll see the side nav. This has changed considerably. Um, it used to <clears throat> pop out on the right hand side as I hovered over, which kind of was an odd behavior. Uh, <laughs> what we've done now is we, again, from the pattern asset library, there is a pattern for this that is used in places like health and monitor, uh, but Maximo has a lot more items in it because uh, it's a lot bigger, uh, okay. but it's still fairly easy to get around. So here, if I go into administration, if say I click on administration, it pops open and shows all of the applications inside administration. And if I have a, uh, a third level, I'll see another carrot here that opens to show uh, the third level of applications and it indents each time I go in. Uh, one of the nice features about this though is that it closes when I'm not using it. So if I roll over, it pops open. And if I roll out, it closes. I can pin it open by using this hamburger menu up here if I want to, that'll keep it open. Uh, but it doesn't take up nearly as much room uh, and it feels pretty smooth. So we're pretty happy with uh, this improvement. And I see we've still got the find navigation at the top. So you can just jump right to an application using that find. Um, yes, that's capability, correct. Which is a great time saver when you're in an admin role and have a, access to a lot of applications like you see here on the list. Yeah. So. We actually improved this a bit too. So if I type in work, you'll see uh, it finds all of the uh, applications that have work um, mm -hmm. as a keyword. And it also shows me which modules they're inside of, uh, which oh, is nice. nice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so since we're doing work, I'll jump over to work for order tracking and take a look at uh, this application. Uh, so the side nav here has also changed a little bit, but not too much. Um, it has all the actions in the exact same spot they've always been, uh, but now I can also condense it down um, in this fashion, similar to how it used to be, but you'll see it's not, it's no longer combined with the side navigation. There are now two separate elements that okay. kind of live independently. Uh, which is nice. It makes it that a little nice. bit easier to use. And yeah. it's a little clear on how to condense it too. Before that little bar kind of got a little lost in the, mm -hmm. the side there. So having that clear carrot is, is easy to make it. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> the actions for uh, any application have moved a bit. Uh, you'll now see that they're in the top right, uh, which one nice feature is that they are pinned to the screen. So no matter what kind of uh, screen size I have, uh, these actions up here will, will remain pinned. Uh, my search feature is here now. Uh, if I want to find a record, that's now where that's going to live. Uh, we have some improvements coming to this in, in the next couple of releases that we'll be doing. Uh, here's an overflow menu. Uh, this is the same one that was there before. Everything is just now on the right as opposed to the left. Uh, typically actions uh, for the current page are on in other applications 
kitchens in the suite are always on the top right. So we wanted to follow that pattern and just kind of align them there. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and drill into a record here. So this is our standard form. Um, you'll see that anything that is in a read-only state does not have a white box. Um, anything that can be edited does have a white box. So that's how uh, we're displaying editable versus read-only. Uh, required fields are highlighted with a large red asterisk and bold text. So you see duration here stands out a little bit more than in previous skins, so you can tell what's required on the page. Um, another piece that's changed quite a bit is the tabs. Uh, we've made some pretty big improvements up here. You'll see that they are docked as I scroll, uh, so I can quickly navigate around uh, to another tab. Um, there's an, a menu on the right here that if I click on it, I will see all of the available tabs. Uh, <clears throat> we no longer wrap the tabs down if there's too many to fit. What we do is instead we uh, kind of create this flowing menu. So here, when I can't fit them all, you'll see I now have a little chevron. I can click that chevron and that will swipe them left and right uh, so that I can access all the tabs uh, that are visible. Or I can always just use this menu that will be available to see all of them. And that also is kind of, you know, docked here. Uh, so big improvements to tabs. Um, let's go into assignments and take a look at table. We've made a couple of improvements to the table. Um, so one of the major things that has actually changed uh, since our initial release of the skin and is pretty new in an 8.6, I believe, is an update to the actions of a table. Uh, you'll see here I have now an actions button. We used to always have the buttons for tables at the bottom of the table, yeah. which was a little bit confusing, especially if you had 50 records or something uh, being displayed. You'd have to scroll all the way to the bottom of the list to see the actions you can take. Uh, but now you can take the actions from the top rather than having to scroll, and they're just condensed into a menu. Uh, if I only have one available action, then I'll be able to read that label rather than opening the menu. And our new row action is right here. So when I click on that, that's how I'm going to be creating new rows. Um, another nice feature we added that a lot of you have been asking for a long time for mm -hmm. was when I open the details of a row, <clears throat> they used to appear all the way at the bottom of the table. Uh, but now they're going to appear right where I click. So here I opened that first row and the details are directly below that row. And if I scroll down more, you'll see here are the other three rows. Uh, so this is a lot more usable, in our opinion, uh, rather yeah, than having to, yeah, a lot less of uh, horizontal scrolling um, than in the past table. So big improvements there. Okay. Um, another small improvement we made is the field help. So you see work order here. You used to have to do a little funky trick and hold command uh, function one or something on a Mac. It was a little bit easier on PC, but now you can just click on it and it's going to give you that field help. Um, nice. Yeah. That is an improvement. So a couple things that jumped out at me. One is the blue box. And I know we talk in mobile a lot about following the blue box. And so the, the OK buttons and the action buttons and all are kind of that bright blue. And then the other big change that caught me off guard a little bit is the the yes or no fields being the little toggle switch, whatever you call that green thing now, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. at first was a little kind of surprising. Yeah, so the toggles, they used to always be a, a checkbox. Yeah. <clears throat> and in, uh, in our modernization efforts, we've kind of adopted the toggle rather than the checkbox. It's really difficult to tell if a checkbox is disabled um, because it's still just a box. Right. But here, we think it's a little bit easier to tell that, you know, this one is off and this one is off, but also disabled. Right. Uh, so if you have you know, more color, that's something that is, you know, green obviously means on, and the dark left means off. This one is disabled, but active. Right. So it might take a little bit of getting used to. And there's certainly some iteration that the designers are doing here. Uh, I wouldn't say it's perfect yet. Uh, but it's our kind of first stab at improving, uh, you know, the checkbox idea, which is more of a checkboxes are typically better for multi-selecting um, than they are for a single option that's yes or no. Okay. 
Well, cool. Well, we uh, we knew that 30 minutes was going to be tight on the time frame, and uh, and it is. We're at 25 after already. I know we had one more slide that kind of talks about the roadmap of where we're going from here, and then I think there's been quite a few questions in the the chat. So let's pop back over to that and and see what kind of questions we can talk about, and then also, you know, what's the future hold for um, for the next phase of the the design. For sure. Yeah, so the next phase of the design, <clears throat> we've already gotten one of the things done, which is the action menu and tables. Uh, the next piece we have to look at is bi-di uh, or bi-directional support for languages like Hebrew and Arabic uh, that kind of leverage that. That's a big gap that we have right now, although a lot of you probably aren't affected by that. And then the next big initiative we have is an upgrade to the start centers. Uh, we want to kind of take a look at our start centers again uh, and adopt the patterns in PAL use more modern charting uh, techniques and, and components for charting. I think the charting package that the, the start centers use today is a little bit dated and could definitely use some attention. Uh, and then we want to adopt some patterns for personalization in the start centers, uh, making it a lot easier uh, to edit what those KPIs are, are doing right on the page rather than having to go into the KPI manager app and then back to the start center to see those changes take effect. Uh, and of course, making it mobile friendly, I think would be a big win um, that we have the capabilities to do that. And I think a lot of users, you know, they wanna be able to check out the start center from a device, uh, maybe, maybe not getting in and doing the heavy lifting, um, but just getting the quick at a glance view uh, of how their, uh, how their day is gonna look uh, on their phone and then getting more into it in the desktop when they come in. Okay. Well, those are all great changes to be going forward with. So um, looking at our chat window, a uh, couple of things that are in here. There's a lot of questions, so we're definitely not going to get to all of these. Um, we talked earlier about uh, the system properties that are, are going away and what will remain with application designer. Um, different colors uh, for the Maxima CSS. I would assume that will be going away in the in the spirit of the consistency across applications as well, as far as being able to modify the CSS files. No, that'll still be allowed. Will that still be, okay. <clears throat> yep, yeah, customizations, you know, we, we still allow all of that. We never really promise that they'll work through upgrades, uh, <laughs> but uh, there is, we haven't taken away that ability. Okay. All right. What about the ability to control individual field sizes? I know, you know, with the current scans, we have the ability to set a, a field size control. Um, will that remain as part of the app designer capabilities? As they yes, are yes, it still is. Um, we've actually made that work even a, more like Tivoli 13 than we had in IoT 18. Oh, great. Uh, so you should see that work pretty well. Um, you know, there are always kind of edge cases and places that don't behave well. <laughs> But, um, but that feature is still there and still works. Okay. So along with that would be the ability to do other changes. Um, there's one here to make required fields a yellow background or something like that. Um, do you still have those level of field controls also? Yeah, yeah. I believe that was there before that already existed. So you yeah, can still do that, yes. Okay. And then... Uh, You've got one question, and I'm going to end on this one because we're about out of time. Can we pick one name and stick to it? Now, you and I had laughed earlier because I think you call it Moz and I call it Mass. Uh, so we've got a little bit of a potato potato there. But right. um, what's the official terminology for the application suite and what we know is Maximo 8? Uh, yeah, I mean, a Maximo application suite uh, is, you know, as far as I know, the official terminology. Uh, but I'm not, I'm just a designer. I don't come up with those. <laughs> so I think the official name going forward is manage for the EAM and then Maximo application suite for the overall product suite. And depending on what part of the country you're in, you might call that mass and you might call that Moz and you might call it MAS. I don't know. But um, I think that is the name that it seems like is going to stay for, for a while and what we can all get get used to so right yeah manage um, i believe refers to as like the maximo core uh, yeah so maximo yeah. mobile yeah. is actually part of manage okay excellent all right well we're at our 30 minutes already so that flew by pretty quickly um jordan thanks again so much for your time great introduction to the 
to the application suite and the new look and feel. We're very excited to be working with it. And um, if anybody's got any questions, wants some follow-up information, please reach out. We'd be happy to um, to connect you with the right folks to get those answered. So Alex, back over to you. Thanks, Amy. Thanks, Jordan. Um, and thanks for the name clarification too. <laughs> so like Amy said, we'll be following up. We will share a copy of the slides as well as the recording, and we look forward to working with you. Thanks so much. Have a great day. Bye. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Take care.